Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to a CLASP webinar on the CLASP Policy Resource Center. Uh, my name is Stephen Pantano. I'm Chief of Research for CLASP, joined here uh, by my co-presenter, Sara Demartini. And we're happy to have you here today. Um, a little housekeeping before we begin. This webinar is being recorded, uh, including the Q&A and chat transcripts. Uh, we plan to share the recording and the answers to any questions we are unable to get to uh, during the webinar in a follow-up email. Uh, unfortunately, we're unable to offer captioning or translation services for this webinar. Um, and we'll note that all participants will be muted throughout the webinar. Only presenters have the ability to mute and unmute themselves. Uh, we, so we ask that you send all questions through the Q&A feature on Zoom. There's a button at the bottom of your webinar screen to do so. Um, and you're also welcome to share reactions and comments in the chat box. Next slide, please. So first, a little bit about CLASP. Uh, we are an international NGO uh, with offices all over the world. Uh, we've been around since 1999. And our mission is to improve the energy and environmental performance of appliances and equipment we use every day in homes and businesses, uh, accelerating, accelerating our transition to a more sustainable world. Uh, we as an organization uh, focus extensively on appliance energy efficiency policies and market transformation initi initiatives uh, from off-grid solar technologies, um, bringing power to energy impoverished people to cutting the catastrophic impacts of climate change from products like uh, air conditioners. Uh, our programs at CLASP increase uptake of affordable, low impact, high quality appliances. Next slide. We work uh, with governments and partners in the private sector, consultants and others to put together rigorous energy and quality standards uh, that promote innovation and competition. And we work with manufacturers, consumers, and others to label and deploy uh, outstanding products. Uh, we work uh, across compliance, testing, quality assurance, labeling, standards, awards, uh, as you can see here uh, in this slide. And you'll see an example today of some of our cross-cutting research, online tools, and stakeholder resources, which help to make information available to appliance efficiency practitioners around the world, um, really helping to uh, achieve that global impact. Next slide. So during this webinar, uh, my colleague Sarah will, uh, and I will introduce you to the Class Policy Resource Center that was launched last June. This is a, a very exciting uh, new tool for us at CLASP and one that's continually being developed. So I think this webinar uh, is really meant to introduce the tool, uh, give you a little bit of its history uh, since it's evolved from uh, something that we've we've had here at class for a number of years and uh, give a, a bit of a run through of use cases uh, to show how different users uh, might use the Policy Resource Center and then have a bit of a discussion through the chat and the Q&A about the evolution of this tool and uh, where you as our user base might see it uh, evolve in the future. Um, so additional features or improvements you'd like to see, uh, questions you may have on the current functions and features, um, and really an open discussion of, of where this tool could go and how it could, could achieve greater impacts uh, in the global market. So with that, I am happy to hand this over now to, uh, to Sara Demartini uh, to, to give an overview of the, the CPRC. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for, uh, for the introduction. Um, um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sara Demartini. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of uh, the class, the Policy Resource Center, uh, followed by a run through of our platform and uh, some use cases. The, um, the CLASP Policy Resource Center builds on the success of the CLASP standards and labeling database. The database launched in 2000 as a collaborative effort among the founders of CLASP. As one of the first projects they undertook to launch CLASP and its brand. Together with the first edition of the SNL guidebook, the CLASP SNL database was 
with information on countries with developed energy efficiency policies, the types of policies, and which products uh, policies covered. The database initially covered 32 countries, reflecting those that had adopted an energy efficiency label or standard as of 2001. Throughout the years, various philanthropic funds supported the revamp and maintenance of the class policy data. In 2018, in an effort to further improve the policy database, CLASP led a user survey to understand how users interacted with the database, what issues they encountered, and what additional features they could find useful. Throughout 2020, CLASP worked on the development of a revised platform supporting policy tracking In June 2021, CLASP launched the CLASP Policy Resource Center, housing over 1,400 policies across over 120 economies. So before we dive into the data uh, and the tool itself, um, just like to give a little bit of background on the coverage. Uh, so, so this tool, uh, the CPRC, as Sarah mentioned, grew out of uh, the CLASP Standards and Labeling Database, which has been uh, a, a feature on the CLASP uh, website and a resource for policymakers for uh, well over a decade, close to 20 years now. Um, and it's evolved and grown, uh, expanded in scope over the past uh, five to 10 years. And this new tool is, is really, uh, the CPRC is really meant to reflect uh, the growth and evolution of, uh, of this resource for practitioners. So there are more than 120 countries, uh, policies from more than 120 countries represented in the CPRC. Um, and we capture uh, a total of 1,400 policy records uh, across 132 different product types. Um, these policy records uh, are sourced through uh, independent research by CLASP and uh, our partner network. We rely upon government websites uh, we rely upon relationships that we have with policymakers uh, around the world for information, um, and we rely on partner organizations conducting workshops and seminars uh, as resources for, uh, for the CPRC. So to the best of our ability, we, we validate uh, and, and quality check as much of this as we can. Um, it is a pretty extensive effort uh, that we try to conduct on an annual basis uh, to refresh the data and really rely upon all of you, the users, to help us, uh, help us with that Q&A and quality check and, and data inputs if we find more information that should be included. Next slide, please. Sara, are, uh, are you back now? Would you like to take over? Yes, thank you, Steve. Um, let's now take a closer look into what the CPRC covers. Uh, um, as, you, uh, as you can see, um, we have three uh, kinds of policy instruments. Uh, we have minimum energy performance standards, minimum water performance standards. Indeed, water efficiency is uh, one new area that we are covering in uh, the Class Policy Resource Center and in addition to the previously existing policy database. We have quality standards comparative labels and endorsement labels. Um, we talked about 132 products. Uh, these products can be both for on and off grid, and these are categorized under 14 categories. We can see some of these here. Uh, for example, we have electronics, uh, refrigeration, space heating and cooling, um, pumps uh, uh, and lighting. Next slide, please. In terms of the application and audience, uh, um, the CPRC uh, aims to provide a clear picture of global efficiency policies to facilitate decision-making and analysis by policymakers, researchers, members of the appliance industry, and other practitioners. So, through the CPRC, users can explore efficiency policies from various countries around the globe and make international informed decisions and influence their own processes. Next slide, please. We are now ready to um, take a look at uh, the CPRC. Um, next slide, please. 
first, uh, I'll give you a general introduction of uh, uh, the CPRC and uh, the different tool pages, and then we'll dive into uh, different use cases. Through the use cases, uh, we will try and give you an overview of how different uh, user types can benefit from using the CPRC. Uh, we will look into researchers or consultants, policymakers, as well as the private sector. Um, throughout the use cases and the demonstration, uh, I'll provide you um, with uh, information on how you can provide feedback or comments uh, uh, or even policy updates. Okay, uh, I'll navigate now to the, um, to the CPRC and those, I'll try to share my screen once again. We are now on the CPRC homepage and uh, there are three different ways that you can search policies. You can either click uh, in the top right corner on this button, search policies, and this will take you to the general policy database without any, um, any filters applied. Or to the, uh, to the right, you can also see this magnifying lens. By clicking on the magnifying lens, you can type in some text and uh, this will search this text uh, throughout the class website. And here in the center of the page, uh, we have different call-out boxes. If you, can, if you scroll through the call-out boxes, you can see um, different uh, product categories or policy areas. And clicking on a call-out box will take you to a pre-filtered uh, uh, pre selection. These categories are not an exhaustive list, but we wanted to provide an overview of uh, main, uh, main areas and um, by clicking on one of those, for example, on the find labeling policies, we land our policy database. As you can see, we have policy information divided by different columns, and uh, we have found 963 results. We can have uh, comparative labels and endorsement labels. If, for example, you're not interested, let's say, in endorsement labels, you can simply click on X, and this will reduce your research to only comparative labels. You can also decide to uh, show or hide columns or store the information. Let's now take a look at the filters. Uh, we have uh, um, the possibility uh, to filter information by geography. So for example, if I click on Asia and the Pacific, I will select all, um, all the countries under Asia and the Pacific. Instead, if I am just interested in China, this will deselect all the rest. And I can see already from this number how many policies we have for comparative labels in China. Here we have the products covered. Um, as we said, we have 14 product categories and different policy instruments. In terms of the policy status, users can choose if they are, want only to look at policies entered into force or under development. There is also um, something new in terms of uh, the entered into force categorization. First, uh, you can decide only to look at policies that were adopted or also policies that were revised. Uh, in, when you click on revised, you will only see and uh, we will only keep track of the last revision of the policy. Or you can look at uh, policies under development. In terms of requirements, uh, policies can be mandatory or voluntary not applicable only applies to those policies that are under development and uh, for those maybe we don't know if they're going to be mandatory or, uh, or voluntary. Then we have uh, um, different uh, uh, screen, different uh, um, fuel types as well as different related topics. I can now close my filter. And I can see again, I have 497 results for policies that entered into force and are under development and the comparative labels. Um, I, uh, I can also sort them, as I said, for example, by country, and I will see um, 
them in alphabetical order. I can download the policy information and I can access the policy details pages by clicking on the title. But we will dive into more detail about this through the use cases. Let's now go back to our, um, uh, to our uh, homepage. If we keep on scrolling down, um, we, uh, we see another way to access the policy database and then uh, uh, latest policy updates. Uh, here we have different kinds of updates, for example, analysis or news. Analysis uh, uh, refer to uh, new policies added to the database, for example. And news, uh, as you can see here, we posted about the webinar. Here um, in the top of, on the top of the screen, we also have about. And uh, about uh, um, will tell you about the history of, this, uh, of, the, um, of the class policy resource center. The methodology page is also an interesting page that, that you may uh, want to visit. Uh, class provides uh, the taxonomy of the policy database, and we have included the terminology that we use in the Class Policy Resource Center in this page. So if you have a doubt about the term that is used uh, on the CPRC, feel free to visit this page. For example, um, before I mentioned that we only keep track of uh, the last revision of the policies. And uh, here is an explanation. If, if you weren't sure about what revised means, you can see that revised field indicates that the year when the policy was last revised. To the right, we also have uh, uh, FAQs. We uh, divided FAQs into about the CPRC and using the CPRC. Um, so if after this webinar, um, some of you have uh, still some difficulties and would like to know more about how to filter, for example, policies, you may want to click on how do I refine uh, search results. And here we have um, an overview about, uh, um, uh, about refining search results. If you'd like to share some feedback or, or from some feedback or updates, you can use our form. Uh, you can just input your name, your email, and then type in your questions, uh, your comments. Uh, and also in case you see a policy that will need an update or you can use, you'd like to give us uh, um, some new ideas or features, uh, you, can, uh, you can type in your comments here and send it to us. Um, an additional page that also um, I'd like to show to you is the partner resources page. Um, this page lists uh, uh, resources available to stakeholders in the energy and water efficiency spaces uh, that are offered by our partners. So if you're interested in adding your organization's resources to this page, please contact us and you can do it through this, through this feedback form. I'll take you now back to the, um, to the presentation. Let's take a look at different use cases. Uh, as I mentioned before, we'll try and share, and share with you how different user types uh, can benefit from the Class Policy Resource Center. And uh, uh, throughout these use cases, I'll also try and introduce to you different features. The first use case is about a researcher or a consultant. So someone who is interested in conducting some analysis. Um, in this case study, we're going to look at on-grid products and in particular, we'd like to find out about mandatory minimum energy performance standards for refrigerators that entered into force globally. So the way I'm going to approach this research is uh, I'll try and do it through um, our, um, our call-out boxes. We have uh, refrigeration policies, I will click on this. And uh, as I can see from my pre-filtered research, I have 191 results for refrigeration policies. I will continue filtering my research. I just clicked on the filter button. And here we said we are interested in policies globally, so I don't have to filter anything by geography, but I do want to filter uh, refrigeration policies further. We said we're interested in refrigerators. So here you can see refrigerators, freezers. So 
So you click on this. Then we said we are interested in mandatory minimum energy performance standards. So I'm going to click on minimum performance standards. It says we have 78 policies. We also said we're interested in those that entered into force. And they have to be mandatory. So I close my filter and I can double check. I have policies that entered into force, minimum performance standards for refrigerators and freezers that are mandatory. Um, again, I like to uh, filter uh, policies to store the policies by country name. I can look over uh, my results, but as a researcher, what I like to do is to download, um, is to download the, um, all the policy information that I have found. So I have uh, um, downloaded this information and uh, when you download policies, you will have a plain Excel sheet. What I've done is just basically to create a table and you can sort information as, you, as you'd like. Um, for example, in this case, I was uh, interested in looking more into um, when the policies were, were adopted or revised and updated by class. So I sorted them as the latest, um, as the latest revised and adopted policies. And as you can see, you can have all the different uh, fields that we have in the policy table. Let's now uh, look over the second use case. In uh, the second use case, we'll always talk about a researcher uh, or say someone who doesn't have much time available. And uh, in this case, uh, um, you may want to uh, simply find if, uh, um, if there is some information available in the CPRC and maybe you know specifically one term that you're looking for. Um, so the, there is uh, one particular feature that we are going to explore for this use case. And uh, uh, what we are going to look for is uh, understanding whether the CPRC covers water sense specifications. So there are different ways uh, um, that I can use to find out if there is water sense. Uh, if I were to go uh, with uh, the usual way, let's say, uh, without, um, um, without conducting the fast, without using the fastest way, I could just look for water efficiency policies, but I have to know that water sense uh, are used in the US. Sorry, I just clicked on, is in the Pacific, I click here. Um, so I put Americas, and then I may want to look into endorsement labels. Uh, um, and here I will see that we do have water sense specifications. However, uh, there is a faster way to do this, and uh, um, you can use our magnifying lens. What you can do with a magnifying lens uh, is to type um, your key term. So in this, can, in this case, yeah, I'm looking for water sense. Click on the zero, and uh, I will have my results here. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this kind of research is very useful if you are looking for a specific term or if you're looking for, a, um, let's say, maybe a policy title you're sure of, or a, a particular area of interest. Um, it is not a kind of search that may help you if you input a general uh, term like label, because you will look for labels throughout uh, the CPRC site. So in this case, I've uh, looked for water sense and I found the water sense specifications. These different boxes also tell me what page it is. So in this case, we are talking about policy details. And uh, um, we will get back to this page in one second because there is one use case that I'd like to show to you that discusses policy details in particular. Sarah, this is Steve. There's a question in the Q&A. Uh, are all of the entries hyperlinked uh, back to the original source documents? Oh, yes, thank you for the question. Uh, we are going to get to that in one second in the policy details page, but to answer the question, yes. Um, 
most of, let's say, I think 90% of the policies are correctly sourced. Uh, there is the official source uh, for these policies. In case we don't have an official source, uh, we also, um, we can also uh, source partner stages, uh, reliable partner stages, uh, uh, or, uh, um, or we may also have information from uh, um, our work on the ground. So in that case, if it is a draft policy, they might not be um, any, any specific policy search because we have, um, we have um, uh, collected information through our work. But that should be specified in the, in the document. And uh, we are going to discuss this just now because um, in this use case, we are going to talk about um, something that might be useful for a policymaker, for example, someone who wants to uh, look into policies in more detail. Um, we are uh, looking at on -grid products and the objective is to understand uh, the status of policies maybe in a neighboring country or region and uh, find, find out what our countries are doing. In terms of research details for this use case, uh, we want to look into space cooling labeling policies, in particular for room air conditioners. And uh, we want to know which, um, which countries have adopted these policies or which countries are uh, developing these policies and to look at specific, specific policy details. So what I'm going to do is to use the search policies here in the top right corner. We said we are interested in uh, um, labeling policies in Asia and the Pacific. So what I'm going to do is to filter policies. First, I can do it by geography and I click on Asia and the Pacific. I close my filter and then I can move to um, space cooling policies. So I will select space heating and space cooling. And under the main categories, we have additional categories. So uh, air conditioning. And then again, we want to look into room ACs. So I'm going to click here. We said it says that we have 48 policies. In this use case, we're also interested in labels. And in particular, let's say we are going to look into comparative labels that uh, are both entered into force or under development. So I don't need to select either. Uh, they will be both applied. And uh, here we are. So we can close our filter. It says we have 30 results found for Asia and the Pacific comparative labels, room ACs and stationary ACs. Um, again, I like to sort the results by country name. And then, um, you know, I can, uh, I can scroll through the different results. And let's say I'm interested in, uh, in this policy. What I can do is click on the title, schedule 24 light commercial air conditioners for India. And we land our policy details pages. The policy detail page provides additional information to what we just uh, uh, saw through the other use cases. First, uh, we have the, to the, the title here at the top of the page. And uh, the title in this case is also repeated in the policy details box. However, we use the policy details box also um, for providing titles of um, in the original language for some of the countries, or in the case of European Union policies, titles can be very long. So we prefer to keep the title short here at the top of the page and to provide the full title in this box. Here is the source of the policy. So if I click here, um, I will lend uh, the original um, policy document. So this should answer also the question that we just, uh, we just received. I'll go back to schedule 24. And uh, here in the box, uh, we also provide a description of the scope of the policy. And uh, to the right-hand side, uh, we have uh, um, some policy details. 
Um, something very interesting that I'd like to mention is uh, that for labeling policies, uh, class collected labels. Uh, so um, as you can see here, we have India comparative label for I commercial ACs. I click on here and I can see um, our um, AC labels for India. Um, something I'd like to specify is that uh, for most of the countries, we only provide an example of a label, so not product specific. However, for India, for some policies in the EU, we do have uh, um, specific uh, product specific labels. We also provide the link to the responsible agency. And in some cases, if it is available, we also provide the link to the test method. And here at the bottom of the page, we have fuel types, related topics and products covered. I have saved here um, the water sense page that we were looking at before. This is an additional policy details page. I saved it because I wanted to show you some additional details. Um, first, uh, as you see here, we have this see more. Um, this is just an example, but in case, let's say we have more information to display, uh, we use this feature to uh, basically add some text so that it doesn't cluster the, um, the box. Also in this case, you can see the water sense label. And uh, um, at the bottom, there is something that I wanted to show to you, it's the related information. Um, this links back to updates. Um, so this is a water efficiency update. Um, since this policy is related to water efficiency, um, it's basically linked. So if you click on here, uh, you will see our article about uh, policy updates on water efficiency. Something additional that I would like to share with you and I didn't mention before is also that in this new version of the Class Policy Resource Center, uh, we, um, we categorize policies uh, uh, a little differently. It means that we do not categorize policies by product or by policy instrument, but by the policy itself. So that is why you can see, for example, here we have multiple product types, but also multiple pro policy instruments. So uh, this is different from the policy database that we had before, and therefore I wanted to, um, to share this with you. And this is our last use case. And this use case, I uh, like to uh, discuss how a private sector stakeholder, maybe a manufacturer, uh, might find the CPRC information useful. Um, in this case, we're looking for off-grid products. And the, under the objective is to understand what quality standards uh, need to be respected in different countries. In particular, we are going to look for quality standards in the African region. First, if uh, um, I wasn't sure about what off-grid policies the CPRC covers, uh, I may also look into uh, the uh, about page, no, sorry, uh, under the FAQ page. And uh, under different questions, uh, we have also included under about what kind of off-grid policies I can find in the CPRC. So as you can see, uh, we explained that the CPRC database covers the quality standards for off-grid products. Uh, small solar power electronics, biomass and solar stoves, and off-grid households or like commercial refrigerators. We used to have off-grid policies already in the class uh, policy database, but we have refined the taxonomy and we have updated information. Uh, we will access our off-grid policies through our color boxes here. And as you can see, we have 24 results uh, for off-grid policies. And uh, uh, we said we are interested in uh, African regions. So I just click here. And here I have all my African countries. And uh, um, something to mention is also that uh, the majority of product types that we currently cover are solar energy kits and as well as some biomass stoves. 
So in case uh, uh, our, in, our interested, I could look into, for example, Ethiopia, and I could see that there is a draft Ethiopian standard for PicoSolar that is going to be developed soon. Um, it, is also, it might also be relevant to, um, to mention um, that if you continuously check the CPRC, you may also use this filter. You can click on updated by class to newest first. And this will help you make sure that you're looking at the most updated information. Or in case, I don't know, maybe you're looking at the policy that was last updated last year, uh, you can also use it as a, you know, as a piece of information. Maybe you can reach out to us in case uh, you'd like to give us an update or ask, ask us for more information. This Sarah, be, yeah, before we move on, there's a, another question in the Q&A uh, around the standards levels for products. Um, so if you're looking at a single product class across all countries, for example, is it possible to extract the, um, the EER values, for example, uh, for air conditioners um, for all product standards uh, into a single table or downloadable file at this time? Um, thank you, Steve, for the question, and thank you for the question. No, it is not possible at this time, uh, but we do provide the source of the policy. So uh, you may refer to the, to the policy document and, uh, and find the information directly. Are there other questions? Uh, not at the moment that I see. Uh, but that's actually a great segue to the next portion of the presentation around what's next. Um, so uh, here's, uh, first of all, thank you, Sara, for the great overview of the tool um, and some of its features and functions. We encourage everyone uh, here today to access the CPRC directly uh, following this webinar and experience it for yourself and let us know what you think and what can be improved uh, or, or built for the future. Um, this portion of, uh, of the webinar now is, is an open discussion uh, and a, a user poll around features and functions to be added in the future. Um, granted, you haven't, you know, this is the first time we're introducing it. So we expect, uh, we expect this, um, this discussion to evolve over time. This is a, a resource that we plan to update continuously at CLASP for many years to come, uh, and it will continue to evolve and grow. Uh, in response to the needs of you know all of our uh, everyone in our community, uh, all the practitioners of, of appliance efficiency around the world. So we would yeah, we would like, uh, I think first, uh, if you can go to the next slide, a few comments on what we are thinking about, um, what we are thinking about for the future of the CPRC. Uh, I think uh, certainly, as the landscape of different types of policies for appliance efficiency and quality continues to evolve, uh, both for energy, for water, um, and any other impacts, we will you know, continue to expand the scope and the scale of the information. So right now it's you know, 1,400 uh, policy records. I expect that number to grow um, you know, pretty, pretty readily uh, over the coming years. Uh, we are also, uh, Considering some of the questions that we've already seen um, in the, the Q&A today, we are considering different types of data visualizations, which might be included, um, perhaps maps of policy coverage for certain products, graphical maps uh, showing, showing policies, you know, whether they're in place or not, and maybe different ways to filter those maps. Uh, that is certainly something we've discussed ourselves as a team, but we really want to make sure that those types of features will actually be used before we uh, invest in them, obviously, and, and we want to prioritize those uh, develop further developments that are most useful to uh, the actual users of this uh, of this uh, particular tool. Uh, we also there was just a question in the chat around policy impacts. Um, we have another resource on the CLASP website called MEPSI. That is our uh, policy impacts uh, projected uh, projection tool which covers uh, currently seven or eight different uh, major 
energy consuming products um, and does global and national level analysis of policy impacts from appliance efficiency standards. And we are also considering ways that we might integrate that analysis tool with the CPRC so that we can do some much more advanced um, real-time analysis. Another option, uh, you know, whether or not these become flexible um, additions to the CPRC or they are reports that we might produce at CLASP on a you know, semi-annual or annual basis showing policy developments over time and linking back to the information in the CPRC and MEPC is, is still to be determined. There may be some features and functions that we uh, we do you know on a regular basis as reports and others that we we build right into the tools uh, for our users um, to take advantage of in real time. So those are all open questions. Um, I think we have now a very brief poll to which I will launch here um, to get some initial feedback on uh, from all of you on what you think might be most useful, of course, based on what you've seen so far. And hopefully you can all see this now. So, you know, among the sort of in general terms um, are customized visuals based on the policy data in the database, um, analysis uh, of policy trends and impacts, um, user-friendly, more user-friendly features to provide feedback uh, and policy updates. So Sara mentioned that we, you know, we rely on all of you as well to, to help us quality check and, and keep updated uh, the information in the CPRC. So if there are ways uh, to improve that, uh, we're definitely interested in hearing that as well. Um, or any other suggestions, you're welcome uh, to put directly in the Q&A or the chat. Um, so I will pause for a minute here and let the poll run, um, and then we can come back and discuss a bit further. Okay, I'm going to end the poll now because we have a, a dead heat between, oh no, we've, we've just got data visuals pulled into the lead. So I will share the results now. Hopefully everyone can see this. Um, very strong response uh, for both uh, data visuals and analysis pieces. So that's right in line with our, our thinking as well. Um, and obviously as all of you dig into this resource and tool if you have specific suggestions for what types of data visuals or policy analysis pieces would be most useful, uh, we certainly welcome that. Um, CLASP, uh, you know, as a, as a philanthropically funded uh, nonprofit organization, we, we exist as an organization to serve your needs uh, as, as practitioners in the field. So if there are things we can be doing better uh, research we can be producing that will drive immediate impacts uh, where you work uh, on appliance efficiency, you should, you should feel free to tell us that uh, at any time, uh, whether it's CPRC or otherwise. Um, we're, we're very much interested in, in doing the most uh, we can with the resources that we have to make your job easier. So um, again, as you, as you dive in and, and, and learn uh, the CPRC, as well as perhaps our MEPC tool, which is, is also linked on the tools and resources page, of the CLASP website, uh, we do welcome your feedback and any, any specific um, comments or uh, discussions, you're welcome to, uh, to direct to me or, or 
uh, through the feedback mechanisms uh, or to SARA uh, or the feedback mechanisms listed um, on each page and we'll be happy to um, to get back to you. So um, we have one more um, one more question in the chat. Um, Sarah, the question here on the glossary of terms. Do you want to? Did you um, did you cover that a bit? Um, do you want to go back to that a little bit and, and revisit that piece? Sure. Okay, give me one second. I'm going to share my screen again. Can you see the CPRC homepage? Yes. So yes, we do have a glossary of terms. Uh, it's under methodology. Um, here you can see basically our taxonomy. Um, so if you have a doubt about what um, the category policy instruments covered, we have uh, an explanation here. And in this case, we also provided some more information so uh, you can really um, understand also more how we categorize information, for example, for comparative labels. Uh, um, and uh, if you scroll down, we also have a product taxonomy. And under these, uh, you can see um, how we also categorize the different uh, product categories and some more information for some of these. Hope this answer the question. And Sarah, it also um, occurs to me that we, if you, while you have your web browser up, could you go to the CLASP homepage and just quickly show, uh, show everybody how to navigate uh, to our tools page and where they can find links to CPRC and MEPC, um, for example. So sure. here, if you click on, uh, if you click on tools in the top bar of our website at clasp.ngo and scroll down a bit, you will see uh, our MEPC impacts calculator link there. Um, our database of quality assured off-grid products. That's uh, the Verisol product database. And, and third is uh, this CPRC, which we've been demonstrating today. So that's that's how you get there uh, through the CLASP website. Um, and we welcome you all to visit. And again, let us know, um, let us know what you think. Um, and lastly, I guess we have one more question here on comparisons of MEPS levels. We did talk about that a little bit uh, earlier. That is something that can be done uh, to some degree, you can you can do this through the MEPSI tool, um, and that is something we're looking into uh, enhancing across all of our tools and making available on the CLASP website, either through um, through you know interactive resources or uh, reports that we produce on a fairly regular basis. So that is a, a great suggestion and something we're definitely considering uh, including in the future. So I believe that answers all of the questions that have been posted. Um, we have a few minutes left, uh, but welcome any final questions uh, before we close this webinar. If there are any others, uh, again, welcome to use the, the Q&A or the chat. And sorry, we can't see your video, we can only see me. For some reason, uh, I apologize, but ah. I my Zoom is um, okay. I, today is not cooperating. <laughs> no problem. All right. Well, uh, Sarah, any last uh, last comments from you before we close? Um, I'd like to thank everyone for having joined us today. Um, thank you, Steve, and we hope that you'll uh, find the CPRC useful. Please share uh, some feedback. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you so much again. Right. Thank you, Sarah. And again, thank you for uh, for all of you who participated today. We had uh, 40 or 50 participants on the line and another 80 or 90 uh, signed up who will receive the webinar um, by email link. Uh, so if you've missed anything today, you're welcome to review that and we will be in touch. So thank you all again. And uh, we look forward to hearing uh, hearing your your feedback and thoughts on, on this and other tools and, and continuing to work with you um, to advance the mission of improving appliance efficiency around the world. So thank you very much.